Alors, mon équipe, c'est une équipe solidaire euh, qui vit bien ensemble. Euh, L'idée, c'était de constituer euh, un groupe plus qu'une équipe. Les 23 joueuses ne joueront pas durant cette Coupe du Monde, donc euh, il était important, de, au-delà de la performance, d'afficher un, un bel état d'esprit. Une certaine forme de pression, mais, mais sans pression, puisqu'on sait très bien qu'un match d'ouverture, c'est quelque chose de particulier. Qui plus est, le stade sera plein demain soir, donc euh, forcément avec des émotions différentes que chacune va appréhender à sa manière. C'est ce qui est le plus difficile à maîtriser pour moi, entraîneur. Maintenant, euh, je sais aussi pertinemment que mes joueuses attendent ce moment depuis un petit moment maintenant. France, summertime. In the air, a sense that this could be the breakthrough moment for women's football. The host nation has revolution in its heritage. Would it once again launch a new epoch? Or would the burden of expectation prove too heavy? Je pense que les forces de l'équipe de France, c'est vraiment le collectif. Parce qu'on a des jeunes joueuses, on a des joueuses expérimentées. Et tout ça, je pense que sur le terrain, c'est vraiment notre force. Pour moi, jouer une Coupe du Monde en France, c'est un rêve, un rêve de petite fille. Les objectifs, c'est clairement de remporter le trophée. The opening match. The final in Lyon, a distant dream. Would the hosts make the start they hoped for? Could they unite a nation behind them? These are the moments when the players will be feeling all the adrenaline. Chance! Go! Il y a Eugénie Le Sommer qui arrive! 1-0 pour les Bleus! Oh, oh oui, oui! La tête! La tête de Wendy Renard! Henry, urge to go for goal! Et Amandine Henry! Bien sûr, Amandine Henry! Et la capitaine des Bleus vient sceller une magnifique victoire dans ce premier match. So far, so good. A record crowd and a domestic television audience of nearly 11 million sated. While Paris was proving the perfect stage for the opening scene, the tournament would take in another eight cities. Reims, the heart of champagne production, hosted the second match in Group A. Former champions Norway faced African powerhouses Nigeria. Looks to set up Utland. Goal number two for Norway. The French gauntlet picked up decisively by Norway. But after the opening round of matches in Group A, it was Corinne Diacre's team in top spot. Soyez les bienvenus si vous nous rejoignez sur France Bleu, il est 21h, France-Norvège, c'est parti, c'est à Nice. Et c'est parti depuis tout juste 12 secondes et déjà un premier coup franc pour cette équipe de France. Le centre côté gauche d'Amel Majri qui trouve à 6 mètres Valérie Gauvin qui se pose pas de pression, il n'y a pas de contrôle à avoir. On met pied gauche. Attention quand même aux Norvégiennes. Bon, elle se rapproche, ça va partir en profondeur sur le côté gauche. Ça va arriver. Wendy, non, le but contre son camp. Mais c'est pas possible. Mais c'est pas possible. Penalty pour l'équipe de France, 71e minute de jeu. Et non Et petit filet gauche pour Eugénie Le Sommer. Ce ballon qui part au fond du filet. Elle est heureuse. Two games, maximum points, one victory away from a clean sweep. 
Standing in France's way, Nigeria's Super Falcons, in fine voice and looking to avenge 2018's 8-0 drubbing. Seventy-six minutes of toil, but no triumph for the French. Then, finally, an opening. VAR awarded a penalty. Agony for Renard. But then hope renewed. Another VAR intervention, this time penalising Nigeria's goalkeeper Chamaka Ndozi for encroachment. The keeper cautioned. Renard relieved. At the second time of asking, there was no mistake from the former captain. France safely through with maximum points and first place in Group A. Norway, in second, accompanied them into the knockout rounds. While not necessarily showing the form of champions, Les Bleus had lined up a meeting with the third place team in Group C, a section that had thrown up its fair share of drama. Brazil had struggled in the group stage. In their match against Australia, they were 2 0 up and coasting. Marta writes her name into World Cup history. Q collapse. Australia 3 2 victors. Desolation for Brazil. The 18th of June, Valenciennes, and dramatic defeat behind her, one of the greatest women players of all time was tuning up nicely. The relaxed approach belied a steely determination. Victory for Brazil was vital in their final Group C match against Italy. The 74th minute, Marta with a chance to break the deadlock by scoring the seventh penalty of a remarkable FIFA Women's World Cup career. Three points and a knockout match against the host secured. Italy, also on six points but with a superior goal difference, remained top of Group C and faced a round of 16 tie with China. Attention turned to Australia. Three points the minimum requirement against bottom place Jamaica in Grenoble. Step forward another national talisman, Sam Kerr. Excellent header, 2 0. Oh, good run. Crosses fizzed in. And Sam Kerr has a hat trick. Elation for Australia and Sam Kerr the striker finishing the match with four goals. That was enough to confirm a round of 16 match against Norway. 
Group A and Group C complete, and the eighth edition of the FIFA Women's World Cup was living up to its billing. We didn't come here to, to look at people, you know, we came here to let people look at us. You're just as even as me when we cross that line, you know, you might have a higher status, but guess what, we're, we're both here. Jamaica were going home, but they were doing so after an inaugural FIFA Women's World Cup appearance that had brought smiles to many faces. Havana Salon, round the keeper! Jamaica have their first ever World Cup Finals goal. They left France having shown that they not only deserved their place, but with the promise of more to come. The reggae girls were one of four debutantes at the tournament. They came in search of success against some of the world's strongest football countries. For them, reputations meant nothing. Opportunities were equal. It didn't matter if you were big or small, one of the best players on the planet, or an untested debutante. In Group B, La Havre was the setting for South Africa against Spain, Banyana Banyana's first ever match at the FIFA Women's World Cup. We've waited over 27, 30 years to qualify for the World Cup and now the opportunity is here, it's up to us to work and, and fight and show the world why we are part of the uh, 24 teams that are here. For 69 minutes, it looked as though it might be a dream start for the Africans. Benyana, Benyana! Oh, we've got a shock here! But Spain had other ideas. La Roja with a historic World Cup victory. España va a lograr su primera victoria en la historia de las Copas Mundiales Femeninas de la FIFA 3 a 1. 2003 and 2007 world champions Germany eased into the competition with a 1-0 win against China in Rennes. Marojan hinten auf Pop. Und jetzt ist Platz. before beating Spain by the same scoreline in Valenciennes. Alexandra Pop and then wird nachgestochert von Pebritz. After a narrow second loss to China, South Africa were heading home, but were hoping to do so on a high. However, after two narrow wins, group toppers Germany were looking for goals to build confidence ahead of the last 16. Quinn, sich wieder vorne mit eingeschaltet. Pop, 3 zu 0! Das ist gut! Lina Magul! South Africa beaten, but held their heads high. All eyes on the future of the game. Many young girls out there are looking up to the players in the national team. So everything that we do, we do it for women's football in our country. Scotland were handed the now familiar task of playing neighbours England in their first FIFA Women's World Cup match in Nice. When the two met at Euro 2017, it ended 6-0 to the Lionesses. Two years on, and the slate had been wiped clean. I think it's going to be massive. I think just the occasion itself, I mean, the first game, the opening game against England.
Revenge would have to wait for another day. Two first half goals were enough for England. Here's a chance and a white curled into the net beyond Alexander. And once again, Scotland pay the price for failing to clear. Third at the last World Cup, England next overcame a courageous Argentina. In their final Group D match, the Lionesses had an opportunity to avenge a 2015 semi-final defeat to Japan. But more than that, top the section with three wins from three. When you look at teams that have won in the past, it's, they almost seem unstoppable, and especially when they hit their stride as we seem to be doing now. Record. England victorious, Japan through in second place. The final Group D match, Argentina versus Scotland, fading hopes for both, resting on a first World Cup win. Here comes Scotland now, they fought a good save from Correa and it's stabbed in! Let's a delivery, 2-0 Scotland! Brighton's header, pushed under the post, and in! And Scotland are surely, surely heading to the knockout phase. But with 15 minutes to play, Argentina launched a comeback for the ages. the game in the final seconds. A dramatic draw that suited neither. European champions the Netherlands opened Group E in La Havre against New Zealand. The football ferns appearing in their fifth World Cup, but still looking for their first ever win. Kiwi Hearts broken in stoppage time. In front of a sea of Aranje in Valenciennes, the Dutch proved too strong for Cameroon. 22-year-old Vivian Miedema netting a record 60th goal for her country. Miedema, all-time top scorer of Oranje. But the indomitable Lionesses weren't finished there. A thrilling late win over New Zealand booked their place in the last 16. Now all eyes were focused on Reims, as the Netherlands met Canada with a top spot on the line. Goeie voorzet en Roord, nee, Bierenstein! 2-1! Nederland! Three out three in Group A. 2015 champions the USA travelled to Reims for the opening match of their title defence against Thailand. Another David and Goliath story as the 34th best team in the world faced the American machine. Super, super dangerous. It's fun. It's fun to, you know, to, to be able to play among some of these players. And we've kind of got all the weapons, so it's exciting. And uh, hopefully, we, we continue to do some damage. The big guns were firing a merciless clinical display. Alex Morgan's got two.
back for shot, and there's another. Morgan, shot, go. Come on. Five for Morgan. Cutting the lead, she's got it. 13 nothing US. The largest ever victory in FIFA Women's World Cup history. Chile were next up for the USA, and they had to put their admiration to one side for 90 minutes. Obviamente, enfrentar a Carly Loy da un gustito como, pucha, es una de las mejores. Pero eso no quita que yo el domingo no vaya a ir fuerte con ella o a marcarla o no, eso no. to score in six consecutive World Cup games. Carly Lloyd's got two, U.S. has three. Sweden versus the USA to see who would top Group F the first real test for the defending champs, and one they passed with flying colours. Last remaining debutante, Chile's first ever Women's World Cup campaign hung in the balance. Against Thailand in the final group game, they needed at least a three-goal victory to go through. Despair for the South Americans, denied by the width of a crossbar. But the team departed France unbowed. Este mundial va a, ver, va a ser un cambio en la, en la mentalidad de, de, de los chilenos, por lo menos. Gracias a la clasificación al mundial se dio a conocer mucho más todavía y yo creo que este es el inicio de algo grande para el fútbol femenino chileno. Four debutantes started the tournament. All fell at the first hurdle. But while the established powerhouses had stamped their authority, the quality of the newcomers testified towards a bright future for women's football. No vai ter uma formiga para sempre. No vai ter uma Marta para sempre. No vai ter uma Cristiane. E o futebol feminino depende de vocês para sobreviver. Então pense nisso, valorize mais. Chore no começo para sorrir no fim. Stirring words from Brazil captain Marta, the World Cup's all-time leading goal scorer, male or female, and one of the most vocal advocates for women's football. As the 2019 tournament headed into the knockout stages, history would be written, legends created, idols revered, and new heroes acclaimed. The round of 16 got underway in Grenoble, at the foot of the French Alps. Germany's climb back towards the summit of the women's game continued against Nigeria. Group B winners Germany proving far too strong for the African champions, winning by three goals to nil.
Sweden and Canada played off for the right to meet Germany in the quarterfinals. A solitary goal and a wonderful penalty save, settling it in the Europeans' favour. <laughs> Germany versus Sweden, a rematch of the Rio Olympics final three years earlier. This time, Germany were confident not of claiming gold, but of safe passage to the final four. Weil wir glaube ich in den letzten gefühlt zehn Jahren immer im Verlauf des Turniers irgendwann auf Schweden getroffen sind und ähm, ja es eigentlich immer positiv für uns ausging und wir ähm, den Sieg immer geholt haben. Ja, men det är klart att det är den bilden som som alla vill måla upp och och det handlar ju om att inte låta det bli ett spöke utan att se det som tändvätska och, och se att det ska motivera en istället. And for Germany things went to plan early. But this Sweden side was made of stern stuff and two well taken goals saw them stun the twice world champions. Jakobsson med den individuella manövern. Där är Fridolina Rolfsson. Jätteröd gör skott och det turen i Molko. Det turen gör Stina Blackstenius Molko. England had progressed from Group D with a 100% record, and Phil Neville's team continued its good form in the round of 16 against Cameroon. Ball turn, one nil. Alan White, it is two nil. The indomitable lioness's frustration threatened to boil over. Duggan with the corner and arriving brilliantly with the finish. England get a third goal. It's Alex Greenwood. In the end, a 3 0 win for England and a quarter final showdown with Norway, who'd eliminated Australia on penalties. When it comes to the knockout games, each knockout game is going to surpass any game that we've played before because the pressure is more and more. Uh, you're playing better teams that, you know, they want to win just as much as you. It's, you know, if, if you don't win, then you're going home the next day. Winners in 1995, Norway made their return to the quarterfinals, while England, semi-finalists in 2015, were looking to confirm their status as a real contender for the ultimate prize. Bronze drives the dead ball on White, misses it, and England have the lead. That is the fastest goal of the tournament. And Paris is in behind the Norwegian defence. Paris 2 0. A tap in once again for Ellen White. Beth Mead pulls it back, bronze! There it is, 3-0! England were not going home just yet. Italy stunned fancied rivals Australia and Brazil to top Group C, and their success continued in the round of 16, with a 2-0 win over China. Leazzurri's stunning form, built on the foundations of the side that won the 2008 Under-19 European Championship in France, 
11 years later, five of that history-making squad remained in the ranks. Eh, sicuramente vincere un europeo in under 19 è stato il primo trofeo vinto in Italia. Un po' di brividi perché eh, veramente l'associazione con la Francia per me rimane veramente il ricordo di quell'europeo. Un gruppo di ragazze che veramente sull'onda di un po' di entusiasmo e i risultati ovviamente hanno fatto il loro. In the quarterfinals Italy took on the Netherlands, who'd eliminated Japan in the round of 16. Daar is dus de goal van Lieke Martens. Italy's fairy tale return to the World Cup stopped at the quarterfinals. The end of one adventure, but quite possibly the start of a new era. Meanwhile, the river of Aranje flowed on towards Lyon. France versus Brazil, a fixture that inspired an entire generation of French footballers. Ça m'évoque le football, tout simplement. C'est une affiche de rêve, on va dire, pour tous les fans de football. Ça me fait penser aussi à la finale de Coupe du Monde en 1998, où les garçons ont gagné. Et ça a été des moments forts pour pour tout le monde, donc des beaux souvenirs. 21 years after that night in Paris, this time it was the women's turn in the round of 16. Scoreless after a tight and tense opening 45 minutes. Thaisa equalised for Brazil to send the game into extra time. Il y a nouveau Amel Majri, cette fois-ci c'est bien parti, c'est très bien parti C'est très bien parti Avec Amélie Henry pour le deuxième but français The French captain sending the hosts through to the quarterfinals. A rising force in women's football, Spain were hoping to add an historic feather to their cap in Reims when they looked to upset the defending champions. And they very nearly did just that. But the USA's winning mentality saw them through to the last eight. Liberté, freedom, the power or right to act, speak or think as one wants. The concept is enshrined in the French constitution and its meaning embodied by the Statue of Liberty, a gift from France to the United States to celebrate 100 years of independence. The land of the free represents the pinnacle of the women's game. It's a country that has for many years given its girls and women the freedom to express themselves on football fields, creating an identity, developing a culture passed down from generation to generation. It's been ingrained in us since, you know, kind of the first camp that you come in here um, from the old guard. Those, those incredible players just set the tone for all of us. It's every day at training. It's the competitiveness. It's the grit that this team just like embodies. It, I mean, it was started Um, a lot earlier before I was here. In 1991, Michelle Akers and Mia Han led the USA to victory in the first ever FIFA Women's World Cup in China. Eight years later, on home soil, a second triumph, and Brandy Chastain's iconic celebration. We're not here without all of those players. Um, they, you know, not only paved the way for us, but also, you know, 
left the game in a better place to put us in a position to do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter who is here, I think that's just what we've created over the years, is that mentality that we're all, that we know when we step out on that field that we're going to win. They claimed a third title four years ago in Canada. The irrepressible Carly Lloyd netted a hat-trick as the USA defeated Japan 5-2. But the Stars and Stripes never rest on their laurels. That's not the way it works. When I go to bed at night, um, I'm actually not thinking about the 2015 World Cup because that was four years ago. I've, uh, you know, as soon as the World Cup ended, I quickly moved on, on from that. Um, there's no, no time to, to sit here and dwell on kind of the past. The U.S. women's national team met host nation France in the quarterfinals in the most eagerly awaited match of the tournament so far. Oh, it's going to be a huge game. Um, I just think it's going to be like one of the biggest games that anyone has ever played. Um, obviously, we've gotten to play in quite a few finals, um, and it'll probably match that intensity. And for France, it'll, it'll likely be the biggest game that any of those players have ever played. On est en quart de finale et on a un objectif un tout petit peu plus élevé que ces quarts de finale. Donc on sait qu'on va rencontrer une nation du football très difficile, très difficile à battre. Maintenant sur 90 minutes, voire 120 minutes, c'est ce qui est joli dans le football, c'est que c'est possible. The US team thrives in these pressure cooker environments and made the perfect start. Rapino sends it in low. Go, US! Another Rapino double. The US forward leaving an indelible mark on this tournament. A courageous French comeback. Too little, too late. The Stars and Stripes victorious. The gracious hosts out once again in the last eight. And then there were four. The favorites, the United States of America, against three challengers from Europe as the tournament shifted focus to Lyon for the final assault on the summit of women's football. Otroligt stort. Jag kommer ihåg hur jag vaknade mitt i natten och kollade på matcher och nu att stå här och få spela med ett fantastiskt lag och vi har känns och och väcka drömmar hos andra små tjejer som och killar som sitter och kollar på de här matcherna betyder mycket. Only four of the 24 nations that began the 2019 Women's World Cup had earned the right to a trip to Lyon for the business end of the tournament. A new city, a new stadium for two semi-finals, the final, and to bear witness to history. On one side of the draw, there was the attacking artillery of the United States and England. On the other, Sweden and the Netherlands and their steely defenses, teams carrying the hopes of their countrymen and women. The ultimate aim being crowned champions of the world.
England stepped up to measure themselves against the might of the defending champions, the USA, in the first semi-final. The first two sides to grace the Stade de Lyon. England midfielder Jill Scott, with more World Cup appearances, male or female, for her country than any other footballer, believed their united approach had been paramount to success so far. I love playing for this team. I love my role. Some players like, say, Nikita Paris, uh, Ellen White, they love going forward, taking a player on, scoring a goal. But for me, I love tracking back, making that tackle. It's just we're all different players, and I think that's what makes us such a good team. After scoring her country's previous four goals, Megan Rapino watched from the bench as her compatriots struck first inside the opening 15 minutes for the sixth match in a row. Oh, let go nicely by LaBelle. Right side, cross! Go! Ellen White equalised with her sixth of the tournament. Cross White, it's in! It's a brilliant equaliser! Ellen White for England, it's 1 1. Alex Morgan then crowned her special day as she restored the lead for the USA. Horan, setting it in there! But, with just minutes remaining, VAR offered England a lifeline. It's a time for the captain, it's a time for Steph Horton to take the responsibility of the penalty kick. Saved! More penalty woe for England. They've missed three or four at these finals. The USA were into a record third consecutive final. Heartbreak for the Lionesses, so close to their first. The second semi-final, an all-European affair, the Netherlands versus Sweden. And despite their status as reigning continental champions, the Dutch felt they had nothing to lose. Ja, de druk is eraf. Um, Zweden die heeft de afgelopen toernooi laten zien dat ze een toernooiploeg zijn. Um, Engeland en Amerika zijn geweldige landen in het vrouwenvoetbal. En ja, we moeten hier gewoon van genieten. En een wedstrijd, een halve finale en een finale zouden een wedstrijd op zich zijn. En ja, daar moeten we gewoon met die insteek moeten we de wedstrijd in gaan. No quarter asked, nor given. The sides boasted two of the best goalkeepers in the tournament. And that quality was very much on display in Lyon. Scoreless after 90 minutes, the match decided by a solitary moment of brilliance and the relaxed Dutch were into the biggest match of their lives. Sweet Sabre, Nederland, naar de finale van het wereldkampioenschap. July the 7th. Four weeks of drama distilled into one final game. Still several hours before kickoff, and the Stade de Lyon was abuzz with preparations for the ultimate match in women's football. Lines marked. Flags hoisted. A majestic setting for such an historic occasion.
the FIFA Women's World Cup was ready for its crowning moment. And the eyes of the world were not going to miss it. Welcome back to the Stade. Yeah, welcome to Boston Trocadero. I'm Rob Stone. In Leon, it's Where you can Stadium really feel down. the atmosphere We've got this one starting to build. From multiple <laughs> angles <laughs> and see. <laughs> Increíblemente, siempre favorita. Een historische dag voor het Nederlands vrouwenvoetbal. And then it was time for the main event. The stars of the show, the players, finely tuned, mentally and physically prepared for this precise moment in time. Elite athletes in their bubble, relaxed, but focused on the job at hand. The favorites, the defending champions, the United States of America. The most successful country in the history of the women's game looked to add a fourth coronation. So far, Jill Ellis's star-studded side had fulfilled their side of the deal. Six wins from six, 24 goals scored, and united in every way. I think that's what makes us dangerous, you know? I think it's no secret that, you know, there's not one player we rely on. Everyone has a role to fill, and when you're on that field, you can create magic and everyone on this team is important, and that's where success comes from. Standing in their way, the Netherlands, who only qualified for the tournament via the playoffs. The Dutch had exceeded even their own expectations. But now that they were there, the self-proclaimed underdogs were intent on causing an upset. We are the underdog, and I think it's a advantage, but yeah. So now we have a very difficult pot, and I think the most of all the wedstrijden of the whole tournament. Maar ja, wel een heel mooi affiche waar we allemaal denk ik net wat harder zullen rennen, net wat meer zullen vechten. Um, en ik denk dat het sowieso wel een kwaliteit is van ons en dat als we dat ook nog kunnen laten zien in de finale en dat hopelijk is dat dan genoeg. The final was also a crowning moment for one French woman. Referee Stephanie Frappard ensured the hosts played their part to the very end. The speed and power of modern football meant she and her team needed more than just a whistle to uphold the rules of the game. And then it came down to this. 22 players, two footballing philosophies, a favourite versus a challenger, both with everything to play for. Disciplined and organised, the Dutch game plan was to contain the US attack, and they managed to do just that. And when the defence was beaten, the Dutch keeper was there. And when she was beaten, the woodwork came to the rescue. As half-time approached, the Americans upped the ante, looking for the breakthrough. Scoreless at half-time. The tension was palpable. Just after the hour mark, VAR had its say. Dutch resolve broken. Tournament revelation Rose Lavelle wrote her name onto the score sheet and into FIFA Women's World Cup history. Looking, cutting, shooting, go! Lavelle to never US!
victory for the United States of America. A second FIFA Women's World Cup in a row, a fourth overall. An unprecedented achievement for a record-breaking tournament. For the courageous Dutch, a first ever final ended in heartache. Scant consolation, but their presence and that of their fans had lit up the tournament. Over four weeks of competition, there were historic wins, record crowds in France and over a billion more watched around the world. 146 goals scored, countless saved, debuts made, ambitions fulfilled and new dreams inspired. But this night belonged to another team, and deservedly so. 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup winners the United States of America.